Hey guys, thanks for joining and welcome. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at problem number 89 on leak code titled Gray Code. So first, I'll go over the problem description, then we'll have a discussion on how we can implement an effective solution, discuss any edge cases we have to account for, and finally discuss what kind of algorithms and data structures we can use to make this as efficient as possible. So onto the description, the problem reads, an n-bit gray code sequence is a sequence of 2 to the power of n integers where every integer is in the inclusive range 0, 2 to the n minus 1. The first integer is 0 itself, so that one's fixed. An integer appears no more than once in the sequence. The binary representation of each pair of adjacent integers differs by exactly one bit, and that same property holds for the first and last integers. So they want us to return any valid n-bit gray code sequence for any input integer n. So looking over that acceptance criteria, we see that this first integer is 0. That's a fixed point, and that can help us in our analysis. That simplifies the problem a little bit. The point below it, an integer appears no more than once. Because it appears no more than once and the sequence itself is 2 to the power of n integers long, we know that we have to include every integer exactly once within that range of integers. So there can't be any holes or any missing items, in other words. So if we look at the example, we can see exactly what they're talking about. So for n is equal to 2, they give us an example output 0, 1, 3, 2. And we can see below that each integer differs by exactly one digit bit within the binary representation. So 0 to 1 differs here, 1 to 3 differs in these, etc., etc. And we can also see they provided an alternative example, which is equally valid. So in order to facilitate the analysis, I've drawn up a graph with a few notes and a few observations, which I'll bring into view now. So what we can see here is a graph representation of the possible binary choices we can make for n is equal to 3, which means any 3-bit number can be generated by this tree. So let's focus just on the tree itself, what's in black for now. So we can see at the top we have an x. That just indicates the entry point. There's no actual integer there. Then below that, 0 and 1, where the depth is 3. So this will be the leftmost bit where we can pick a 0 or we can pick 1. Then moving down on each path, we can pick a 0, 1, 0, 1 there, which at this level it generates all of the 2-bit integers, and then the level below all of the 3-bit integers. So as it appears there, that tree generates all of the numbers, just not in the appropriate order we need for this problem. So what I did is on the bottom in this section in blue, I outlined an example valid response where n is equal to 3. And right above that are the decimal versions of the numbers in green. So we can see 0, 1, 3, 2, 6, 7, 5, 4 would be an acceptable solution. And we can see in the binary forms at each point there's only a one digit change. We're either changing a 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0. And we can see the property wraps around again. So from there, at this point in purple, what I've done is I have put them in order. So, for example, this is the first entry, this is the second entry below. This one, 0, 1, 0, is the fourth entry, so I put a 4 under it, subsequently a 3, and then 8, 7, 5, 6, etc. So I noticed the pattern that pairs of 2 were appearing together, sometimes in the reverse order, sometimes not. So in brown below, I've mapped them to the proper order, and what I've observed is we can swap certain subtrees. So for example, coming into 0 and then coming into 1 right below that. If we swap these two elements, then we get 3, 4, so that's a partial ordering now. This side, if we swap that one right there, then things become more in order as well. So by swapping subtrees, we can get this thing into the correct order. So that is something we can take advantage of when we actually implement our algorithm. So with that in mind, we don't actually have to generate the tree that we saw there. That was a tool to help us analyze. We don't actually have to make a tree class or represent a tree in the memory or anything like that. We can just use our observations of what happened on the leaf nodes to generate our list. So I brought some notes I've taken into the comments here, so that way we can take a look to facilitate our analysis. So if we consider each position P, which would correspond to each leaf node in the graph we just discussed. So looking on this part, p would be equal to 0, where I've just highlighted, p is equal to 1, position 2, position 3. We can make some inferences about positions later on based on the position we're at now. 
So if we take P as a position and V of P as the value there, we can generate the current position based on the index of the position before. So if the current position divided by two, and that's integer division, so we round down. If that's odd, then the value of the current position is P multiplied by two. And if it's even, then it's P multiplied by two plus one. So we can actually just use that type of implementation to generate the list instead of having to traverse the tree and do all of that. So let's go ahead and get started with the code. So here we have an iteration limit, which will be two to the power of n minus one. And the reason I'm doing that minus one, the size will actually be two to the power of n, but for iteration, we're going to add two elements at once. We're going to add the p times two and p times two plus one. So the iteration limit will be half that. So I'm just storing that in this sense so that when we do the iteration, we don't have to keep dividing by two. Next, we'll initialize the array, the sequence, which will be of size iteration limit times two. Next, what we'll do is, in order to handle this odd even logic where it swaps, we're going to just introduce a Boolean do swap and at each iteration we'll negate it so that way we can swap as we need to without needing to divide or modulus by two every time. Then in the loop, we're going to iterate for half of the size, so the iteration limit. We're going to bring this into item is equal to zero outside because at first the sequence doesn't have any items. We'll be adding them as we go. But since in the first iteration it doesn't have items, we have to just manually assign it, which we'll do outside of the iteration. So then what we'll do is, in this code, we're iterating from zero to iteration limit. Then I have this db, which is double, so item times two. And I'm putting this in a variable because we're going to need to refer to it more than once. So if the do swap logic is in place, then we're going to add two items to the sequence, starting with db plus one, and then just db. If the swap is false, then we'll do db and the db plus one. So this is where this rule here comes into play. Now we're doing it from the different perspective. This one is saying p divided by two. We're thinking p times two. So if p is even, then we'll add p times two and then p times two plus one. If p is odd, then we'll add p times two plus one and then p times two. So it's the reverse of this. Then at the next part, we'll just prep for the next iteration by flipping do swap and the item will assign to i plus one because we're anticipating the next value of i. Then it'll start over again, add two more items, add two more items, etc., etc., based on the logic here until it's finally done. Then we can just straight off return the sequence. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the correct answer and if so, how it stacks up. So I've run this a few times just to see what we get because there's a lot of variability between the runtime and memory usage. The best we got here was eight milliseconds, which is decent performance and the memory seems to hover around 55 megabytes. So we have a simple solution. I think we can accept what we have here. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like and subscribe for more LeetCode videos. And also be sure to check out our website, bitethisstore.com, where we have a lot of different articles related to different programming topics, such as data structures, web development, Angular, um, some domain specific, some not as well as an online store where we have mugs, laptop sleeves, and other merch related to programming memes and programming humor. It's definitely worth taking a look. Thanks for watching.